<laughs> we are we are in this box right here. There's a breadboard controlling these LEDs, uh, flickering on and off. Uh, but right, so in right behind here. Speak louder. It's in in this uh in the in the little square box. Uh, I've there's a breadboard where I wired up LEDs and this button right here. I couldn't during that process. So basically. The school internet does not allow us to download stuff without... It, 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 won't, it won't allow other computers to download stuff because I don't know why. So I had to take my Raspberry... I had to take my Raspberry Pi home to install the screen, the OS, and the processing. The lights flicker because uh, it's also... It allows the electricity to go through the LEDs through screen movement. Okay. So, if you're going to mess with the bread, uh, the breadboard, I recommend if it's been like three days and you still have been unsuccessful with your buttons, then this is the part where you should start asking the forum, because I've been googling it and I couldn't find it. So, this okay. is the part where I should start asking people online to tell me what to do, because the blueprints people given me haven't worked, and uh, these are new materials that came out recently and. Uh, I, I can only find forums that talk about it, like, go back years, but they use something else. Alright, hey, my name is Blake Brownyard, and I'd like to show you my project I did for Ender Session in Raspberry Pi. So, to kind of test the limitations and, like, what the Raspberry Pi can actually do, I tried to make a two-player fighting game out of it. And uh, it's, it's a couple hundred lines of code, and it's not too crazy in how it works, but it loads images. And I thought it was an interesting way to try and see what the like, hardware was actually capable of. And All right, so as you can see right here, it supports two people playing at once, which is kind of a cool mechanic, uh, because you can really make use of the multiple controllers and such. But uh, yeah, so it's a working fighting game, kind of. It's not running super fast. And that's really because it kind of pushes the limits of what's actually capable on like such a small screen with like the graphics support the screen has. So uh, it's getting oh. like a solid 15-ish frames per second. Can I ask, is it different than the fast. HDMI? Is that is it better resolution with the projector? Um, the resolution, yes. But it's not the pr processing. Um, um, well. We're still really like to this day theorizing like what's going on with like the speed of processing, but Diego, didn't you say you guessed it would work better on the projector? One of the major issues we've encountered is that evidently the screen uh, is unable to use the Raspberry Pi's graphics card. <laughs> okay. The graphics card outputs only to HDMI. Okay. So we think it would work better on the screen, but we've been unable to do any comprehensive testing. As okay. of right now, this mm -hmm. is uh, the expected performance. Okay. Hello, my name is Colton Weiner, and this is my Raspberry Pi project. So, as you can see, uh, this is this is uh, a Raspberry without any filling in it. It's supposed to be the logo, because when you use the mouse, you can move around uh, the screen. Nice and uh, fill it up or put it back to where it was before. Um, there are a lot of problems that I ran into though, considering how up to date some things are and aren't for processing and the different updates for processing. So um, on the Macs here we have processing too and that's mainly because a lot of libraries for processing have only been updated to Processing 2 since Processing 3 has been a very recent update and we are in 2016. Um, so the Raspberry Pis have Processing 3. So as you can tell, there's probably going to be a lot of um, differences there. Uh, processing 3 can only be run on Raspberry Pis right now due to a certain Linux download that you need where it's a Linux arm on the, on the processing page. You'll see that. If, uh, if you do need to get processing downloaded again onto your Raspberry Pi, 
you will see that there is a certain kind of um, Linux that you need, and they don't have that available in processing two or processing one, only processing three right now. So one of the snags that I ran into was that I also didn't have enough time to try and process, um, to try and actually write code for the fish movements, like the tails or their fins to actually like move. So what I did was a simpler way and I was trying to go and use GIFs. Um, however, another snag that I ran into was the fact that they don't have processing to for Raspberry Pis because the library, the GIF library that you need um, to run GIFs in processing is only updated for processing two and they don't have that available right now as of uh, June 2016, they do not have that available for processing three. So, if you make this sometime in the future and you want to use GIFs, then it should be available then, and <laughs> you should be way more successful. Uh, if not, Um, hello, ladies, gents, everything in and out of that spectrum. My name is Laura Beltran, and this is my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> And then talk about what your project is before we show it. Okay, so there are some overachievers that decided to make a video game of sorts and then that ended up not working as well as they intended. Some worked pretty well. I am more of a interactive image, visual art piece sort of person. So my lines and lines upon lines of code create a fractal known as Saren Pinsky's carpet. I probably pronounced his name wrong. I am very sorry for that. So go for it. So this is the thing in action. So I made everything based on the mouse movements. So depending on where the mouse is on the screen, it moves the fractal. And each little square that you see is coded by hand and it actually took me a large part of today to finish it off. Margaret was not happy at me. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, whenever you click on the mouse, it changes the color. Sometimes it glitches out because I have the, the each color set to random, so sometimes the red goes too far up and sometimes it goes too far down. But yes, this is my project. Another cool thing it does is that when you press a random key, depending on what's on the screen, oh gosh, why is it not changing yet? You know what, that doesn't matter. Um, where's the folder? Here's the folder where the fractal stuff is stored. Is it on the desktop or on just a flash drive? It's on the desktop. Okay, great. Um, and these are all the images that I've taken from inside the program itself. And yes, that is my project. You can start, Jordan. Hi, I'm uh, Jordan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the project that we've been working on in our editor session this year. So. Dio here and I, or Dio and I, we're, we wanted to work and create a game, and that's a pretty big thing to do for coding because it's not easy. But we both wanted to make games. I made a Mario game, and well, we thought it would be easier at first. Just the coding part would be the hard part. We came into a lot of like different challenges, which is to be expected, but a lot more than we thought. So the, one of the big things was like getting it to work on like the touch screen, which was a lot of a challenge. The touch screen with the Raspberry Pi, yeah. right? Getting that we had small touch screens like over Raspberry Pi, like this, and getting the games to work on that is really difficult because of the way that the Raspberry Pis utilize their graphics card. Diego, if you want to go into that. So I'm Diego. Uh, the issue with the Raspberry Pi primarily is that uh, the graphics card outputs exclusively to HDMI, so that touch screen uses a serial interface. It's very very slow, and as was demonstrated by some of the other projects you may have seen you get incredibly poor frame rates. Now on something, say, a turn-based game perhaps, a card game, something that uh, goes between screens that's not reliant on real-time, could be very effective, but both our games were very real-time, so they, that wouldn't work. So we turned over to trying to get it to work on HDMI, uh, as I can 
demonstrate here. Okay, and so first of all, can you talk about how do you set up the Raspberry Pi for HDMI? So what we did is we used, uh, the image we have has a built-in recovery mode that just resets you to the default uh, operating system, which means that if you'd like to make, we have our master copy that works on the touch screen, but if you'd like a standard one, uh, my Raspberry Pi uh, and his when we're done here will both be ones you can copy off of to make a non, uh, like, a, like a, an HDMI, like non-touch screen version. You can't go between them with the same operating system. You have to wipe and restart. Okay, and then what are the issues you're having now running it on the HDMI? Was well, so I can demonstrate here. So we have been able to access the graphics card. It's outputting just to find HDMI. And here's a bunch of code for my game. However, when you leave, so size, uh, you'll learn about this soon enough, but the variable declares how big your screen is. And if I can put in a third variable to say use OpenGL, which is a renderer that allows the graphics card to run programs much quicker. Or I can specify something called P2D, which is just the 2D version of the render. And I'm using a 2D game, so I'll use P2D. Unfortunately, when I try to run it, it will start and not get anywhere because of those errors. And Can you read those errors ours really quick? Because we yeah, can't see frame, it. Frame rate buffer error. So it's having a problem uh, buffering the frame rate. And it's crashing. We have no idea what that means, but it means the game's not working. But, as we can see here, when I remove this here, and just have it use a built-in renderer. Yeah. Like you can't see it on the camera anyhow. Okay. When I have it use a simple renderer, it boots just fine, but it okay. still runs extremely slowly. And what's the OpenGL thing you were researching? So OpenGL, like I said, is a software driver for the Raspberry Pi's graphics card. The Raspberry Pi has a very weak CPU, but a very strong graphics card for its size. Being able to utilize that graphics card would allow it to run games at great speeds. You can run Minecraft, you can run Super Mario on here, it's very easy. But uh, our games right now are unable to utilize OpenGL, and that's as far as we've gotten. If you want to try and figure this out, that's what will... Because it, why weren't you able to install time. OpenGL? What happened? We got it on the, on the Raspberry Pis. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten processing to utilize OpenGL in the program. Okay. So it's there. We have a test program that works perfectly fine. However, processing is refusing to cooperate with us. With OpenGL. Yeah. Okay. It won't use it. It throws errors that are unexpected. And we were working on that up till now, but we are out of time. So if anyone else would like... Ready. All right. Welcome, everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create a copy of Raspberry Pi operating system. On, from one Pi onto another. So to start, we have our master Raspberry Pi plugged in and turned on. This one here is the one you're going to clone onto. Turning it upside down, the Raspberry Pi does not have a hard drive. It runs off of this micro SD card, which you need to remove. We can put this guy somewhere else. We won't need it for now. We then take this thing. It looks like a little flask. It's our reader, our card reader. And we take the SD card and we put it in like so. We then plug this into the USB slot of the master Raspberry Pi. Okay. So we take this and it inserts normally into one of the four oh. USB slots inside the Pi. It should then register as a new device on the master Raspberry Pi, which you should have open here. Now we don't want to hit OK because we don't really care what's on it. We care about what we're going to put on it. It opened three times, I suppose. So you go to your menu in the top left, and under accessories, there's, some, there's a program called SD card copy. You open that up. So it will copy from device. You want it to be your internal SD card. And you want to copy to the correct drive. In this case, I'm going to eject the generic flash disk. I have another flash drive in. So Wait, can you do that again? I didn't see it on the screen. So to eject, it's not here now. It's been okay. ejected. But you eject your, any extra drives you have like this one and remove them so that you don't accidentally overwrite important data. Then. You see, okay, I've only got one left, the mass storage device. That is the SD card it's right to. Click start. Yes, it will erase everything on the drive, and you'll be left with an operating system. Now, you will need to follow the instructions of the tutorial again if you wish to have an internet connection, because it will also reset the usernames and passwords to those of the uh, master that you just copied from. 
but it will give you an exact copy of their operating system. So if you wish to switch from, say, a Raspberry Pi that runs on a screen to a Raspberry Pi that runs on HDMI, you can do that this way. And when you're done, you simply go to the top right, you eject the drive, and then you pull it out and put it back in the original Raspberry Pi. Okay, go ahead. All right, so once you have finished the copying, you go up to the top right, and you need to eject this guy, which for some reason, well, let me eject it. Hmm. I guess in this case, I'll just remove it. If it doesn't register it, then it's already been ejected. And you simply pull it out. Okay. And then you have here, your little adapter. You, it's very difficult, but you can pull the little SD card out of here. Now I put this guy away, we don't need it anymore. Now this guy goes back in the slot on the Raspberry Pi. I have served Alright, so now that we've switched the Raspberry Pis over for the moment of truth, everything's connected. Now I give it power and we should see some stuff on the screen in a moment. Alright, it's powered on. Oh. Now we will see if it boots correctly. Now it takes a moment, so we need to be patient with it. How do you get the keyboard to work with the Raspberry Pi, the wireless keyboard? So for the wireless keyboard, there's a little dongle that you pull out. It's inside of the battery compartment in the back, and that plugs in. And oh. then you switch the keyboard on. And if the keyboard runs out of power, it has the cord, which will give you more power. So now we see here, it looks the same as the other one it is the same. And of course, <laughs> if we go and we go try to run processing, you go to your documents and the first file pops up, here's processing. And we open this, click execute. Bam. Here we go. Fantastic. And that is how you clone a Raspberry Pi.